Welcome to Weekend Rooster, where we ask industry experts stuff like, do I really need to charge my battery? What happens when you go down on the trail? You got a plan? Come on. I don't get it, man. I put fuel in it. You know, I, I was a little short on cash. I got some of that cheap stuff. I keep telling me I need the premium fuel, but does that really make a difference? What's better than throwing some roost? Throwing some roost to more horsepower, of course. After making some modifications to the intake and the exhaust, the folks at Preway Power Sports put out a power commander and did a little dyno tune for me just to see what the bike was doing. It turns out that the motorcycle was running a little bit lean. They made some modifications, but I wasn't really sure what that meant as a weekend rooster. So I talked to old buddy Rick Peterson. He's got over 50 years building engines, racing motorcycles at 9.9 .9 seconds, 172 miles an hour. Also participating in syndicated shows like Pastime, racing motorcycles on there. This is what he had to say. Because most of the manufacturers have high compression, so they're going to require that you keep a higher octane. Most of the manufacturers recommend that it is a higher octane. So when you start changing, modifying your fuel curve, you might want to go up with a racing fuel, which has a much higher octane. But what you get from the pump, if you're just going to cruise around, and not get into it, you can run the cheaper gas, but it's going to be noticeably effective how the bike runs. It's going to run better on high octane fuel regardless, because most of these motorcycle motors are somewhere in the neighborhood of 12, 10 and a half to 12 to 1 compression, which requires that you have the octane, otherwise the burn's going to be terrible. It drastically changes it, because the winter versus the summer is more ethanol. So you're getting a higher content of alcohol in the winter versus the summer. And the reason that is is because with the higher temperature of the fuel, it's gonna evaporate quicker, it's gonna expand quicker with it. So you'll end up having vapor lock issues if you use a high alcohol content in the summer. Whereas in the winter, you use the lower. You can have higher, higher ethanol in the winter versus the summer. Okay. But you can't rely on what's, what the, the pump says either because that, that's what they say the standard is, but that doesn't necessarily reflect what that's true. If you actually get a gauge and find out what they say may be 12% at the pump, it's probably more like 17% because the alcohol content's added. It's corn mash. They're, they're selling you water alcohol. So the gas that you have in your tank has got a 15% content of, of, a, of a corn mash, which is water content alcohol. Corn alcohol, corn mash, whatever. Anytime you increase the air out and the air in, you're going to get increased performance. So you put a better air cleaner and put on a bigger pipe. What you're going to want to do is have to fatten it up because it's going to run lean with the open header. Because unless the exhaust can find, unless the computer can modify it to make up for the difference, you're going to be running lean. So you're going to have to make modifications to make it run rich. It's going to run better on full throttle because most of the most of the fuel curves have a 11 or 12 to 1 ratio, which is be more adequate for the amount of flow of air. But you almost have to be able to increase the amount of fuel you get into it to make it lean, to, to take away the leanness. You have to get rid of lean, you have to add more fuel. And then when you free up the exhaust, you also change the strategy of how the burn is happening inside the chamber because of the, the uh, back pressure that's against the motor, so then you need to have timing changes as well. Yes, you're going to start seeing. You don't see that too much, and that's only because there's no back pressure, and then when you let off the gas, you, you hit the raw fuel runs down the pipe, and it lights off of any air that's in there. So the restrictor that's, that are built into the muffler reduce that, and you're freeing that up by putting up the open exhaust. But you're going to have that no matter what. You, there, you can't 
Um, unless you put a, a spark arrestor or something to repress the air that sucks into them when you let off the gas, that fuel is going to burn. But some people can tune it to where they decel the fuel on decel. So when you let off the gas, they r drastically pull back the fuel so there isn't a bunch of raw fuel going out the tailpipe. So they can tell you they can clear up the thing, but it's still going to happen. Because when you have open exhaust and you let off the gas and you've got lots of fuel going in there, which you, which you are doing already to increase the performance of the bike, you're going to have the excess amount of fuel. Oh yes, you're going to take out a head gasket. Okay. You're going to torch a head, torch a valve. You're going to have issues that happen. 14.75 to 1 is stoichiometric. That's what they try to achieve at idle. But while you're under throttle, you want to be up in the 12, you know, you can be 11, 12, 13 to 1. You're going to find them that they anything that's running fast is going to be 12 and, and, and lower to the ratios. It's 12 to 1, 14 to 1. That's 14 air to fuel. That's, that's 14 parts air to fuel. It's air to fuel ratio. So that number that they give you in your AFR, you're telling how much fuel you have to air. Depends on if they're telling you it's horsepower at the end of the crank, which is dining in the engine by itself, or horsepower at the end uh, to the ground, which is after it's gone through the chain, through the gear, through all the all that drop in horsepower. By the time it gets down to the wheel, it's not going to be that. If they say it's got 142 pounds at the wheel, then that's what you're working with. But if they're just saying it has 142 horse, you know, 142 at the crank, that doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're getting at the wheel. So it's going to be they're going to be different. There's so much deterioration in horsepower through the gears as you go through the gears. Well, the biggest thing that makes bikes work better is changing the front gear and go down a, a tooth or two to gain that extra that that extra um, gear ratio. If you want it to go fast, that's what you got to do. You can either go up on the back one, go down on the front, um, but it'll save clutches. It'll make it really fast at the bottom end and it may not be top end speed like depends on what you want to do if you want to go drag racing you need to drop it down two teeth in the front just got to if you do you'll start quit quit damaging clutches and have a bike that's vicious to take off you have to be you have to be very cautious how you launch it definitely a pipe most of the bolt-on tuners work well and then if you really start beefing it up and you can start changing compression and whatnot then you can actually get you can get a larger diameter injector over what stock because the computer in the bike doesn't know what's at the end of that wire doesn't know if it's a 12 pound injector doesn't know if it's a 15 pound injector has no idea it's got a map built in it to fire this much this many milliseconds per per fire on that injector because they know that that uh, if it has the right injector at the end of it if they open it for so many milliseconds, it's going to disperse X amount of fuel. Well, if you put a bigger injector on there, it's going to still pulse at that same amount of time, but since the orifice is bigger, you're going to have a larger shot of fuel. So you can actually fool the computer by just getting a slightly bigger injector, put on a pipe and put on a, an air, you know, an air intake, a K&N or something, and you'll have not, won't have to do a lot of changes to anything. But handheld tuners that you put on them uh, work well when you start changing the performance you need to have more timing you gotta have add timing because they build them so slow to, to, and they're just not accommodating the high compression or the high rpm with that timing they're building it to where it's drivable on the street for you to go cruising around and get good gas mileage well, when you start putting in a bigger injector and a bigger pipe and all that stuff you've just screwed the gas mileage so might as well get you to take the benefit of it and, get, and use the timing i'd like to thank rick for letting us come down Talk about horsepower. If you got a machine, you're roosting it up on the weekends, put the good fuel in it. It might not break down like in my cheesy video, but thankfully we got folks like Rick helping us out so we can stay on the trails and have some fun. Now, if you like what we're doing here, come on back next time.